Hi, Scott Orland with Cinema Magazine. There is a new anthology series coming your way called Small Acts, and I'm here with the creative mastermind, Steve McQueen. Uh, Steve, I've interviewed so many directors, and literally it can take them two to three, four years to put together a project. Here, in a short period of time, you've put together five movies. Talk about the creative challenge of that. Um... Well, yeah, um, I just got, I was, um, it's just one of those things where I just wanted I had the passion to do it. Um, these are stories which are very close to me, but it took a long time to get here. So it's not been such a fast track situation. It's been 11, 11 years and uh, getting an understanding and handling of, of the material. Also, I had a, an amazing crew, amazing uh, a bunch of actors and also an amazing, you know, production team to help me. But it was one, it was just a passion. I needed to sort of make these films. And in some ways, what it was, was these five films were an attempt in some ways to fill the gap in the narrative of British film uh, that I think need, need to be filled with, 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 with the stories that I wish I had seen as a, as a young person. What's really fascinating too, is that television and film uh, hold up to mirror to our lives of who we are and who we have the potential to be. And in these stories, you kind of peel back the layers of racial prejudice, specifically in Britain. Talk a little bit about how important that was for you to shine the spotlight on that. Well, as well as that, um, I wanted to shine a spotlight on joy, on, on, on love, of laughter, or so many other things, which, which was sort of very much apparent in that time, which often don't get seen. You know, that was very much a, a part of that narrative, as well as the things that people had to put up with on, on an everyday basis. It was important because that's what happened. And it was important to sort of sh tell these stories because, um, you know, often people like to brush things, uh, brush over things. And I needed to sort of put a light on all of that, as well, as I said before, of the, of, of the, pleasure and, and, and love that people had for each other. What's really fascinating too, Steve, is that you are showcasing in many instances events that really happened. How important was it for you to pull in the actual people? I don't know if many of them are still around to, to, to be necessarily be consultants, but to get their inside story. Oh, very important. Uh, we had a lot of, we, you know, we did years of, of, of research. And we spoke to, you know, uh, uh, you know, Anthony Laquant from, you know, the head of the Black Panther time in the UK. Um, we, you know, Barbara, all these people who were involved in in, in Mangrove, and obviously you were Leroy Logan, who was in Red, White, and Blue, the, the, the highest ranking police officer at that, that time. All of these people we, we we spoke to, as well as you know, having my own narrative as such, um, my my journey through the British edu education system. So we had a lot of first hand like first hand accounts, but also we had a lot of research. A lot of research. I want to ask you, you mentioned Mangrove. Was there a place for you growing up that was your Epicurean hangout that was a place where you could go that would serve food, but you could just kind of talk about anything? Well, my refuge was the park. You know, we, I grew up in the suburbs in Ealing. And my refuge, we had, we had about three or four parks around me. In fact, five parks. I mean, and we, I used to go to the, the very special place for me was Lamons Park, which was literally five minutes from my from from my door because my parents moved out into the suburbs when I was about six six years old. So that was our place to sort of, you know, my friends. We always we would congregate there, meet there, and sort of you know, um, you know, lie on the grass and sort of daydream. It was, it was wonderful freedom. What I love too about your work is your use of talent. I mean that you know you introduced to a lot of us the work of Michael Fassbender, and in here uh, let's talk like John Boyega for example. We as an audience know him from the Star Wars films, but going through this experience, so many other layers of of character that he kind of presents. Talk about working with someone like that. I think Mike. Excuse me, Michael. I think John. Um, you know, he, you know, he, he needed to sort of fulfill his own potential as, as an artist. And I was very grateful that we were able to sort of work together. Um, and what he achieved and accomplished in, in small acts is, is, again, no small feat. I think he, his own life uh, amalgamated with Leroy Logan, the character he plays in Red, White and Blue, to the extent where you get him sort of, you know, on the microphone in the Black Lives Matters march, when he spoke about you know him being a, a black young man in in London, as well as him coming back to the set when he was doing that, 
and shooting really well, Logan. So uh, Word White and Blue. So his real life and his artistic life sort of interwove in the production of Red, White and Blue, which was pretty, pretty amazing. And again, you know, Leroy Logan's life in Red, White and Blue, the highest ranking black policeman, and John's own life, uh, uh, sort of a, um, um, an actor being in one of the biggest franchise and how their similar things happen to them uh, as far as being failed in those two uh, situations is, uh, yeah, is, is very, very similar. I want to ask you on the other end of that spectrum is you're asking some actors to step up and be incredibly insensitive, prejudicial, confrontational, uh, aggressive, you know, in, in these stories, how, how was it to work with them? Because most people don't want to react like that, but they're acting and they have to present a, and paint a picture. Was it difficult navigating them? No, it's, it's, it's what, what is, what, what is about, that's about being an actor. That's what was about being a great actor. That's what we do. You know, it's, it's, you know, that person is not that, that person has to go there to portray the reality that we unfortunately see every day. And it's very important that we have, you know, talent that, that could go the distance in order to sort of portray the, you know, our reality, unfortunately. And just a last question for you. What do you hope audiences take from, if they sit through all five of these incredible experiences, how do you hope to enlighten them? I don't want to enlighten anyone. I mean, I'm, I you know I imagine a large population of people who watch this will, 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 will be just will be just uh, uh, affirming things, or at the same time, sort of meditating on things. Um, and the people who are unaware of this, I would I would say that, that you know they obviously <laughs> I, I I'll be very surprised if anyone is not unaware of of certain things which 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 are happening around us on an everyday basis. But I think what it is for me the, the whole of this series is about the future. I mean, for me, these five films are science fiction movies because it's about where we were, how far we've come and how far we need to go. It's, these, these movies are about the future. And just really quickly too, what I love too is you showed me parts of London or even England I'd never experienced before. If you were to be a tour guide and you were to send somebody to a cool place in London that maybe is off the map, where would you want them to see? I like the John Soane's Museum. It's a very interesting museum, um, and it's a very interesting. It's, it's a collector. It's a very interesting collector um, who basically went around the world and collected stuff, weird stuff. I mean, you know, it, 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 the, the John Soane Museum. You should definitely go there. Yeah. Well, Steve McQueen, as always, it's such an incredible pleasure. Thank you for these works. It's called Small Axe, and this is Scott Orland. Till next time. Thank you, sir.